I think the real thing, the, the message is inform yourself, educate yourself. And when somebody wants to give you a drug of whatever kind, find out as much as you can about that drug so that when you are giving your consent, you are giving a truly informed consent. I'm actually going to give a seminar on the ethics of the SSRIs because people could not give a true informed consent because the data about the dark side of those drugs was not made available to the public so that it, in fact, you could not give a truly informed consent because that data was not available. And that's what David Healy has done now, is brought that data out. And so finally now, the, the data is out there, and you can make an informed consent. And you may choose to take an antidepressant. Well, it's out there, but not doesn't get to the public because the doctors don't provide it when they're prescribing. They will have to now. I mean, they, they are, the labels on, on the SSRIs are being changed. They're being stopped being given to adolescents, probably all the SSRs are probably going to eventually be basically forbidden to be given to adolescents. Whoa! And, and, and once... Whoa! And once you don't believe it, Bob? No, I, I don't believe that, that it's going to follow that path. He's being very optimistic right now. Well, I, I think that there'll be a lot more questioning, and I think a lot fewer doctors will be handing out the SSRIs like candy. I think it will really cut back because the Brits have really taken a hard line. And so they, right now in Britain, you cannot give Paxil, and you cannot give Effexor to kids under 18. And they're reviewing the, all the drugs, all those drugs, for what's going on in, in, in adults. And they have said already things like, I think goes something like, the SSRIs should not be the first line of treatment for mild to moderate depression, Try exercise, diet, and other non-specific things. Right. So said that. Said that. But isn't the trend still going to we're giving more and more of these drugs to younger and younger kids here in this country? Yes, we have been. Is that going to slow down and even maybe reverse? I pray. I mean, I don't know how we're going to get away from the riddle of madness we're in. But maybe since the, the data about the effectiveness of the SSRIs, they don't work in adolescents. And they barely work in adults. That's it. They just barely work in adults. And, and for adolescents, the data is clear that they don't work, and they have the dark downside in both. Mm -hmm. Okay, So that may make doctors sit up and take notice. I don't know. Is the pharmaceutical industry in England less in control of things? Is that why they're able to come up and face the reality? No, it, it's, you know, they have National Health Service. They have a, a medicine control agency, which has some teeth. RFDA has no teeth. And if they had any, they don't use them. Well, so I got to tell Laura in this story, Bob. Okay. You've heard it already, but I was applying. But I think it goes along with the whole religion business. I was applying for life insurance for a million-dollar policy, and you know when you do that, they send a phlebotomist out to your house to take your blood and make sure it's really you, and make sure the urine is warm, and answer all these questions, and you sign in triplicate and quadruplicate that you give them permission to check everyone, every person you've ever met and known, anything about you, about your medical history, and you sign that you're telling the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God or the insurance is not valid. So you, you answer honestly because you know they're going to find out anyway. They're going to go and find out what you've been prescribed, what you're taking. And as the phlebotomist is leaving my house, she says, you're the first psychologist or psychiatrist I've done this with who's not on Prozac or Ritalin or both. I said, wait a minute, don't leave, come back. I have her come back into my living room and sit down. How long have you been doing this? Just a few minutes now. I'm only gonna, How long have you been doing this? She says, two years. In Newton, where I live, it's got the highest concentration of psychiatrists and psychologists per you know, block. It's a zoning requirement. You have to have one for every, for every block. And... For two years she's been doing it in that area, and, she, and I say, how sure are you? She says, it's something that always struck me. And I, and I started thinking after she left it, you can't get data like that. Where are you going to get data like that? Who's going to come up with, if you send out a questionnaire to a psychiatrist, you get a 5% return rate, right? And, and it's obviously going to be biased to people maybe who are more willing to admit to things. 
You can't get there like that. It, it was uh, it was statistically significant, the number. Right. You see, but that's a true believer. The, the level of belief right. in especially the SSRIs. They those those, those folks were probably would would not take an antipsychotic because they know that they probably have a bad downside. And but they will take an SSRI or speed. You know, speed, you know, for some people, speed kills, and for other people, it, it makes you just as happy as a clam, and, and you you can work like a dog, and you know, and and the SSRIs give you, when they work, you have this attitude, oh, who cares? Right. That's the attitude. Which is and better than being depressed. The <laughs> that's the mechanism of right. action of the SSRIs. But the problem is when you put that with another of their mechanisms, another thing that they do, which is cause this thing called akesthesia, which is a tremendous mental, term, mental and physical turmoil that you'll do anything to stop, okay? You combine that with the I don't care and put that in, in an adolescent who, whose mechanism for I don't caring is already not quite firm, and you have school shooters. And so what you have there is the vast majority of the school shooters in the United States have been taken SSRI. Oh my God. You, you go and you look at, there was a guy in Watertown, what was his name? The guy in Watertown that went back to his company and oh, shot a bunch yeah, of people? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wakefield. W Wakefield it was, okay. Yeah. He was on an, an SSRI. And it's, they are drugs which make people who have never been suicidal or homicidal that way. Those, those drugs are really quite dangerous for a percentage of people who get these two things combined. The akesthesia with the I don't care. So, kill you, easy, you know. And you, you know how kids are anyway. They're impulsive and they haven't got a good fully formed conscience, so you, you might imagine. But it's also true in adults. You know, there's been, every time I read of a sort of, a, but it seems like a random multi-person shooting, I always presume that that person had just started a SSRI or had just stopped.